We're back with the second episode of the Photography and Bands series, and today we're going to be talking about what to expect when you hire a photographer. Photographer. In our last video, we went over how you can find a photographer and the best practices to make sure that that photographer is the right fit and you maintain a healthy relationship with them. And in this video, we're going to be talking about what you can expect after you found your photographer and you have tentatively booked in your first shoot with them. I'm so lucky to have Katie of Clarkson Photography back again with me today to go over this information with you. Katie has been running her own business for 11 years and resides in the Comox Valley. So without further ado, I'm going to welcome Katie to the channel. Hey Katie, how are you doing today? Hi, I'm good. How are you? Apparently we dressed alike. Yeah, apparently. We still live an ocean apart and we have the same clothes. <laughs> That's so funny. Thank you so much for joining us again today. Thank you for having me. I'm really excited for today's episode because I know a lot of people might not have worked with a professional photographer before, and I know that a lot of bands don't know what to expect when they book a shoot. So that's what we're talking about today. You and I got together before this video and put together five tips to share with our viewers on what to expect when you book a photography session. So do you want to jump into it with the first point? Yeah, I'd love to. What is it? <laughs> When booking your photographer, they should send you over a contract. This may seem like a scary thing because contracts are a legally binding form, but this is there to protect you and the photographer. That contract should include anything from cancellation policies, payment plans, usage rights, and turnaround time. The contract should have every piece of information that you are looking for in it. Remember, this is here to protect the photographer and you. Speaking of contracts, it's standard practice in the industry to have to pay a retainer when you sign a contract with a photographer. A retainer is usually a lump sum that is not the entirety of the payment you'll be making to the photographer that will hold your place to save your time with them. This ensures that you are both committed to the shoot day. The last thing the photographer wants is for you to not show up because you're not feeling well that day, or to cancel the session with little to no warning because they would then lose that day of business. And the last thing you want is your photographer to double book a session because they weren't sure of whether or not you would turn up. A retainer is a really important part of the booking process with your photographer, and if you see that you need to pay up front on your contract, which you more than likely will have to do, you shouldn't be scared by this. Before you sign any contracts or pay any retainers, make sure you know exactly what you're paying for. Most of the time, the images that you are paying for are for personal use only, not commercial use. Commercial licensing is a totally different thing that you will have to communicate with your photographer and let them know what you are wanting to do with these images. Wait, Katie, does this mean that if I go to a photographer and I have my picture taken and then they give me the image that I can't just use it on my album art or have it printed in the Daily Mail? Correct. It's just like if I were to buy your song off of iTunes and use it behind one of my videos. That's not right. I'd have to purchase a licensing fee for that song for the right to use it. Which leads us into our next point. Communication is key. So as we just mentioned, standard photography packages usually don't include commercial rights, but that doesn't mean that that's always the case. If you talk to your photographer before signing your contract and make sure that they know what your shoot is going to be for and make sure that it's written into the contract that you have the commercial rights, some photographers might be able to offer you a deal, but you have to communicate with them about what you're planning to use these pictures for. The last thing you want to do is disrespect your photographer and lose a professional relationship. This industry is just too small. So coming back from communication with the photographer and you knowing exactly what you're getting from this package, please do not ask the photographer for the raw images. There's this weird misconception that's happening right now where people are asking for the raw images. I'm thinking what they're meaning are the unedited images. Raw images are a type of file that the camera shoots in. This is just like when you record your album and you have all of these different tracks. When you put them onto iTunes, let's say, those collapse and they are sent as an MP3. In the photography world, that's what a raw file is to us. We go in and we have all of these different layers of things that we can adjust. The lighting, the colors, the tones, all of that can be changed in a raw file way easier than in a JPEG. So if you're wanting a unedited image, make sure you talk to your photographer about that first. Speaking of the unedited images, it's not common practice to ask for this from photographers at all. Asking for unedited images is kind of like asking you for the stems of your track before you've tweaked anything. It would be like laying down all of the parts in your song and then having somebody say, I just want that and 
I'll remix it the way that I want to remix it. In some cases, that might actually happen and you might be okay with that, but in most cases, you won't be okay with that. And that's how photographers feel. So if your contract states that you will have a one hour shoot with a hundred shots and from those shots you will have 10 edited images, do not expect your photographer to provide you with the full 100 unedited shots. That's not gonna happen. It is so annoying when that happens because we spent so many hours editing those images. So I know we just talked about how annoying it is, but do you have any tips on how bands can ask their photographers for unedited images without offending them? Yes, definitely. I'd say the best way to go about that is back to communication. Let them know what you want to do. It's much nicer on the photographer's side if you say you have an editor yourself and not that you are going to do it. What am I trying to say here? It's that I want to make sure that when someone's trying to get it from me, I want to know that they're not going to go and just throw an Instagram filter on it. I want to know that they have an editor who knows what they're doing, who won't go overboard. Because in the end, these images are still our work, and if the edits come out and they're not quite to our standards, it can be really heartbreaking. Thank you so much, Katie. I think that's gonna really help some people understand what to expect when they book their photographer. Yeah, thank you so much. I really like talking about this too. If people wanna check out your work, how can we redirect them to it? Yeah, so I have it all up on my website at clarksonphotography.com. I have Facebook and Instagram, both at Clarkson Photography as well. That's awesome. I'm going to link those all in the description box below so you can easily find Katie and her work. And we're back again tomorrow with another episode. I really appreciate you coming on the show today, Katie, and I'm looking forward to tomorrow. Bye. Bye. <laughs> but I don't want them to ask for that. This is set to protect the photo... I can't say photographer. <laughs> that everything will be... It'll all be fine. Um... <laughs>